woman leads conference in my life. Now, I had never really done a conference per se. I do have certifications in event planning, but I've never done a conference because this is ministry work for me. And I just turned to my husband. I said, you know, the Lord said we're going to have a one, a, a, a one women's conference. He said, okay. And today, we sit here. And I know I know what God is going to do today. I know what God is going to do today because He showed me. Amen. I'm so glad. We just want to first honor God for who He Then he laid his hands on her. 
And immediately she stood erect again and began to glorify and praise God. Hallelujah. We are here this morning to decree and declare. We are here to decree and to declare. Woman, you are released. Oh, 
is not just a to us, but we need it. You are great, Jehovah, and we won't stop praising. We won't stop praising. We won't stop praising. We won't stop praising. Oh, 
Oh 
freedom. Some of us just need to be encouraged. We want to receive what you need. Just in the air. Come on. He's pouring out. He's pouring out of his spirit. He's in the last days. I will pour out my spirit of my love. It's happening. Now, now, now. Now, now, now.
He's moving in this moment. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving. And his name is Jesus. Hey. The powerful name of Jesus. He's here, he's here. His name is Jesus.
of experience in ministry. Audiences enjoy their learning experience with her straightforward teaching, preaching, and counseling. She uses her struggles to go on her goals and triumphs in her life to be more personal and touchable to her audience. Pastor Rachel, along with her husband, Dr. Ronald Wilson, is the pastor of the center formerly known as Kingdom Vision Life Center in North Carolina. Dr. Wilson has also been blessed to launch Rachel Wilson Ministries Incorporated, a ministry committed to hosting various retreats, conferences, and seminars. In 2009, Pastor Rachel founded Girl Talk International. Amen. Amen. A nonprofit organization established with an emphasis on educating women on discovering their purpose and direction in life. So y'all are in for a treat. If you don't have direction today, it's in the room. Come on, look at your sister. It's a six. It's in the room. You're not going to be here without getting it because she comes fully loaded. Her this organization has been featured. Don't stop nothing. Somebody still have 
well in their spirit, where would we all be? Hallelujah. Before I get started, I want to so honor God, as we said, thank God for the opportunity. Let's thank God for Pastors McLeod, and her husband, beautiful family. God bless you. It's such a miracle. This conference is a miracle. I know that in the spirit. Because God birthed miracles. He's looking for He's looking for houses to birth the next conference. And I'm so glad I know you. I'm so glad I know you both. Beautiful, beautiful incubators for spiritual babies. And so we want to honor you all and thank God for this woman release conference. Let's give it up for these beautiful pastors and the angels of this house. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I honor my husband, Pastor Ronald Wilson, who's here, who has been accommodating me, assisting me, along with my son, and all of the center that came with us on the road. Make some noise, center. All the way from Greensboro, North Carolina. So we came to give God praise. We came to do whatever God wants us to do today. So we honor everyone, everyone. Beautiful prophet, prophetess, God bless you. Apostle, uh, Apostle, I don't want to miss any of you. I know we've got some amazing speakers, but every spiritual mother, kingdom mother, beautiful. Apostle, beautiful, God bless you. And all of you in your respectable places, I want to honor God. If you can just stretch your hand here to just pray briefly before I go into the word of the Lord. Father, I honor you for this opportunity. I thank you, God. Of this miracle moment. It all belongs to you, and all of the glory goes back to you. Father, even as I stand here, God, I pray that everything that you have downloaded, that it would be conducive for this atmosphere, and for every hungry soul, and for everyone under the sound of my voice that chooses to receive what you said. I'm so excited, God, for what you're going to do because you always feed your people. And I'm so glad you've already fed me. I give you praise for this moment. And I thank you that we have the victory in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. While you're praising the Lord, you may be seated in the atmosphere. And I have my time watch on. My husband, no, I am long winded. And I'm one of those persons, I'm a stickler, I'm a worshiper. So um, it's dangerous when you get a worshiper or a long-winded person in the house. They better have a time watch because I'm one of those persons, and I believe my sis understand, I can get lost in worship. I can get lost in his presence. And when I do that, I literally lose time. So some of our girl talk sessions, oh, let's thank God for the musicians. Seasons. I don't just get up and say stuff. I just don't get up and 
do things my whole life is just built and established prophetically. Um, I don't go to every appointment. It doesn't matter. We want you to sing. We want to pay you. No, thank you. Because God didn't send me. Some of the appointments are, you know, honestly designed by the devil to remove you where he's called you to be. Uh, I'm telling you, God likes order. So when you have your life set in order, you can hear a orderly God say, no, that is not your appointment. I don't care who's on the stage. You're not supposed to be on that stage. And so I'm just so elated that God allowed me to be here. I got the invitation from the spirit through my beautiful sister here, Natanya. But I'm so glad that it was received by God and I was released for the one who released me. When I begin to pray, I want to say, God, okay, you called me and you released me to be there for the woman release. You know that this is my life. You give me nothing. You know how God do prophetically. He not giving you nothing on your timeline. And I'm like, okay, nothing, a month, nothing, nothing. Holy Spirit, I guess I'm doing a platform service. You ain't giving me nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. good on time. Hallelujah. But when we went to Cali, Colombia, I still didn't have a word for this conference, and we just came back from Cali, Colombia, maybe in like a week. Maybe a week ago, is that correct, babe? Maybe a week ago? Maybe a week. Monday would be a week, so we're not, we didn't even get a week. So I get way in another country, and some of you say, what, you went to another country? I didn't go to sing. I didn't go to, I didn't go to preach. I went to pick up some tea. Because God bless his order. And my daughter, she's here today. Wave your hand, baby. I call her the baby. She invested a gift seed to give her mother some porcelain veneers. Want to do it? And so I said, oh, God, I've been wanting these since I was a teenager. I've always wanted porcelain veneers. So I'm like, the long story short, that's all I just went to pick up some tea. But when I began to pick up the tea, I said, God, I'm only here to pick up some tea. And I began to hear the Holy Spirit say, no, you ain't. He said, he began to share with me, say, you get some tea. That's something that you've always wanted. And it was God funded. So you know God on it when you don't have to pay for it. I know the Holy Spirit on that. So I uh, went there to get these tea. But I began to hear the Holy Spirit say, no, you need new tea for where I'm taking you. He said, you need new tea for your mouth. He said, I'm about to raise up your mouth. You're going to be a voice, but you need some new teeth for a new mouth, and you need a new mouth for a new voice. Somebody say, God, God. bless his order. Bless his so he set my teeth in place for using me to be a mouthpiece. As a singer, God has just blessed us where the, I've never hit the charts, number two, and now it's, 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 it's escalating up to number one. Come on, y'all. With the song I can. This has never happened. But I know before I left, I said to my husband prophetically, I said, I must be going to get some 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 tea to match being number one. And I said that by faith, because I'm a woman of faith. And surely we got back and God has been working some miracle. But I'm here as a mouthpiece of God, humbly, to speak what he said. And the, the word he gave me was no cross. Can you say no cross? No crown. No I'm going to just let y'all chew on that for two seconds in the atmosphere. 
Because everybody wants the cross. Everybody wants the crown, rather. The crown sounds amazing. And I got one down there. I got one down there to show you. We got at the... I know for myself, I, I want the crown. I love bling bling, you know, especially got some gold and some jewels on it. I like that. But the first thing that we have to work on is that cross. And so we're going to talk, we're going to maneuver, we're going to drive, and I want you just to chill. Just chill out, take your shoes off, you know. If your feet don't smell, if they do, you know, y'all know. We can't get that comfortable, you know what I'm trying to say. But let's chill in the here and let's just hear what the word of the Lord is saying because this is the word the Lord began to download to me in Cali, Colombia. He didn't do it in the United States. I have to go way out of the country for the Holy Spirit to say, no. No crown. He said, I'm about to crown you. He said, you've been asking me what's going on with this crucifixion, what's going on with this cross. And some of you today, I know it in the spirit, you've been, you've been going through a cross experience. You've been going through a crucifixion experience. But Holy Spirit wants you to know today, and we're going to read some of the word, and I'm going to go into a few things that can become a cross as well. He wants you to know that no cross, no crown. Because there's a crown, but that crown represents a promise from the Lord. And, and he's just not a sloppy God. He's an orderly God. God blesses order. The order is you go through the cross first. The order is you go through the crucifixion first. You're trying to skip alone. You know, you're trying to bypass through a shortcut to get to your crown. But God wants you to know there's a cross first. And that's what none of us don't like. Okay? And, and, and we know this. Okay, so if you can briefly, um, let me calm down. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited with my sister, too. Oh, my God. So beautiful. I'm so excited about her. So if you, you can turn, you don't have to turn, but if you can turn to 2 Timothy 2 and 12. 2 Timothy 2 and 12. Yes. And it says, if, somebody say if. if, if, that's a major word, don't ever bypass the if. You know why? Because God blesses order. The if comes before the promises. But most time we skip over the if and we start pleading the blood and praying for the promise. And I'm like, ah, 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 that ain't for everybody. It's on contingency upon the if. So if we suffer, where, where my where my person at? Where my uh where the rest of my stuff at? I need all that out, sweetie. Bring the cross out. Bring the cross if it ain't already over. Yes, bring the cross out. Now y'all know this is smaller than what we're going through, right? Your situation with your son is is bigger than this. What you're suffering through in your body is bigger than this. But God is saying, if you suffer, I got something for you. It has your name on it, and it's, in, it's engraved in diamonds. But you got to go through something first. In order to get that, you will have to go through this. If we suffer, and I'm going to tell you where the body of Christ, and I'm going to tell you where Christendom has been flushed down the toilet. Yes, I said it. It's been flushed down the toilet. When we get a revelation that we have to be crucified, I'm too anointed to be disappointed. Crucifixions are very disappointing. A divorce is very disappointing. Losing a child? Losing a spouse? Come on, somebody. But we say a whole bunch of church cliches that we end up walking away from God during the process of the suffering. God is a God of order. And even himself, he came down 40 and two generations. And he did not kick suffering out of the deal. There was a deal set. There was a partnership set. But he went through the suffering in order to gain the crown. If we suffer 
we shall also, somebody say also. also. We shall also reign with him. You can stay close over here because I'm going to need you. We shall also reign with him. Now, y'all please forgive me because, you know, I'm a very excellent woman. I promise you. But because God didn't give me the word until I was in Cali, Columbia, I had to get any kind of crime. But I wanted my crown shipped. I wanted it glistening with butter and diamonds. Not real diamonds, but y'all know what I'm saying. Crystals. I wanted something so lavish because I wanted to give you a picture of what is promised to you if. Yes, sir. On condition. God loses most of us. He loses most ministries. He loses most pastors during the crucifixion. Because y'all know, let's just be real. We too good to be crucified. I pray, I fast. I'm talking about myself. I pray, I fast, I sow, I, I give, I support other ministries. Come on, somebody. Every time somebody calls my, I, 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 oh, what can I do to help you? Let me go take you shopping. Let me go out for the youth. I do everything that I think that I should do to make me be able to be qualified to skip over the crucifixion. Y'all know we're trying to buy our way out of crucifixion. Lord, why do I got to go through this? You're simply saying that I'm too good to go through this, right? You're saying that my good deeds, my servitude, should have erased and blotted out the cross. But I want you to know today that it doesn't matter what you sow. It doesn't matter how much you pray. In fact, more thorns come on your cross. The more you pray, the more you fall. I'm prophetess. I'm apostle. I'm pastor. That is amazing. But you're going to get more thorns on your cross. God told me I'm going to have the great ministry. Okay? You're going to get more thorns. So understanding the system of God and understanding the system that there is a cross, that crucifixion is what qualifies you to that crown. That crown will sit there and rot with Rachel name on it. If I choose to take myself down off of this. And y'all know it's easy to do. I don't know about you, but I don't like pain. How, much, how many of y'all here love pain? And, and, and you know, sis, sis, I'm a happy-go-lucky person. I, I try to make everybody happy. And it does not negate the fact that I still have to be hung on the cross. So I, I feel you. You say, I'm a good mama. My children should have obeyed me. I'm a good mama. I can't see my time. Somebody wants to do it for me. It's my baby mama. But, 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 but you can say all of these things as a mother and your children can choose still an alternative lifestyle. I'm the bishop. Well, the bishop got to get hung on the cross too. I'm the associate pastor. Well, guess what? You have a cross to bear. Must Jesus bear it alone? No. And I think sometimes when we're ministering and when we're loving people and when we're serving our family like Big Mama did and we're gathering all of the sheep to our house and you become the Big Mama pastor over your ministry and they don't move until you say move, I think that Big Mama forget their stuff cross. Somebody say no cross. No crown. What's my time? I'm going to need somebody. Okay. I just need everybody. I don't want to go over time. Thank you. Thank you. But I told you I'm long-winded. I'm serious. I, I, I get lost. So y'all help me with that time. Please. There is a cross that I tried to run away from as a little girl. I told the Lord as a little girl, I said, I said, I want to be saved. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. This is one to release. We're going to release you today. If you receive the words coming out of my mouth. I said, I want to be saved. Come on, y'all. I know y'all some big dreamers. I love the Lord. I said, I want my husband to be my first. I want a wedding. I want all of these things. And I didn't know I was already setting myself up for more pain for the cross. And so 
I had a dream as a little girl. I said, I want to be a virgin when I get married. That was my dream. That was my dream. Talk about it was her dream. I dreamed that. That was part of my dream. I said, God, I want my husband to be my first. I want to have children with my husband. And that was a big dream when you're in a bunch of mess. But I made it. My husband, I was a virgin until I got married. Won't he do it? But you don't understand the motive behind a lot of the things I was doing. I wanted to be a virgin because I thought that it would erase the cross. If I want imperfection, surely the Lord would lay down the cross. I don't have to worry about no baby mama drama. Where y'all at up in this place? You do know that's a cross. I don't want to worry about, I don't know, I, I know that if I wait for my husband, my husband going to be rich. I know, I ain't got no, I don't have no real sisters up in there. I know that if I do, if I do everything wrong, I know that there's going to be a cross to it. See, the way we are built and the way we are wired and the way we are designed is that we think the cross only comes to people that do that. Who am I talking about in this place? I know you're a pimp, so you will go through. I know you are a prostitute, so you're going to go through some stuff in the world. You're a liar, so you know what? You, if you don't get saved, you're going to burn and fire. Come on now, preachers up in here. We always put the cross on the sin. But you forgot. I wish somebody could help me up in this place. I need you to come up here, daughter. Or a team or somebody. You know, you put on your feet now. Lay this on my back and hold it. We preach into the sinner, but did you not forget there is a cross on your back? There's a cross. And God is trying to set you up for a crown. He's trying to set you up, but, but you can't pay your way out of this. So I thought, okay, and I'm done. You know, if I keep myself, no cross. I want you to talk back to me today. This is all of us being relieved. If I pay my tithes, if I marry the right man, and see, my husband is the right man. Now, I dated the wrong man, and God didn't have nothing to do with that mess. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. I picked them. Come on, somebody. I picked the whole cross. We're picking the wrong person. Three times. Three strikes. You out. So I figured, okay, God, I got a broken heart a couple times. Because I picked that cross. I said, now, Lord, here I go again. You picked the husband. And guess what? I thought he was going to eliminate the cross. So I knew that God, if I ask for your sovereignty, and if I ask Holy Spirit, lead and guide me, that I'm not dating another man except he's my husband. If I say all of the right things, and if I do all of the right things, and I sow the seed that you said so, if I fast, if I take the pants off and put the skirt on, come on, somebody, if I wrap my hand with a tile, if I come to church one hour early, no cross. Somebody feel me in this place. Because you're going to be sadly mistaken. The more you, the most. This don't make. Now you've been crucified. Cross for Jesus didn't make no. Christian, right? You should be saying that this don't make no sense. That's what Christians do. That's what typology do. That's what happens when you say, I submit my will to be a virgin until the Lord send me somebody. I submit my will again on the job. I'm not hanging everybody. I'm not going to the You're doing everything that Jesus did. Jesus did not Jesus with the heathen. He tried to win the heathen. I never partied with the heathen. I tried to win the heathen. But I didn't know that I still set myself up to be crucified. 
So I believe I'm talking to crucifixions today. I'm talking to somebody, come on somebody, that is upset with God. Have you ever been angry with God? Miss America. I say, oh, you married the right husband. It's all right. But what God knows, it don't erase the cross. Go ahead, Rachel. That's that's amazing. Call the scene. You got a contract. You're right. I'm doing all of these. That's amazing. But do you notice the way the is getting heavy? No cross? No cross. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So, like most of you, disappointed. Mental breakdown. Have you ever had a mental breakdown? You don't do Had. I know y'all pray for our crown. Just the Holy Spirit me to tell you that you do this was set in the order. Before he wore the crown and became king of kings and lord of lords, he first wore the crown of thorns. So what is God saying? He's letting you know that the false crown, the crucifixion crown, the overlooking crown, that you ain't nobody crown. This would make sense 
if I saw this. And that's when I said, we begin to say, God, did I, did I get drunk? Did I smoke crack? Come on, somebody. You know what we do as for our religious entities? We always begin to catalog our sins to say, why am I going? But remember, just be I'm going to tell you right now, we better put taking in a dollar sin because you're going to fill up this whole world. And all of us begin now to splash all of our sins everywhere. Oh, we would all suffocate with our sins. But think about it. This is a perfect glimpse into what you're going through. If Jesus, who committed zero sins, still had to be crucified to get his crown, who do we think we are? So what we're saying to Jesus is we're better than you. I know we done committed some sins, but everybody better submit to us. Everybody better do right by us. And on top of that, I'm going to still get me a crown. But there is a order to all things. And even the order, I love God because God even followed the order before Jesus made his entrance on the earth. He made his entrance through a real female body. He didn't just become a grown man and say, what's up, y'all? What's up? Let's go, let's go get some fish. Like, no, 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 no. You got to burp first. Tell somebody, burp first. What am I saying? Go through the order. If God can, if God come that 40 and two generations and sit in the belly of a woman that was a virgin and still get pushed out and go through a process of one month, two months, three months. Oh, God. It took time for Jesus to grow up. For 30 years, he was just Jesus. Just Jesus. Think about it. It's okay if nobody don't know your name for 30 years. But guess what? Because we hate that crucifixion, I'm going to print my own card and make people respect me as a apostle. I'm going to make people respect me as a prophet. I'm going to make people know I'm anointed and saying, the hardest thing for anointed people to do is to sit down and be quiet and go through their process. We gotta prove to somebody this. We gotta prove to somebody that. Do they know that I'm anointed? Do they know that I just spoke to three thousand? Do they? Do they? No, they don't even care. And God is putting you in that position because you, there's still something on the inside of you. Come on, somebody that want to be seen and want to be known. I went through the season that I wanted to be seen and I wanted to be known. Lord, I could have sucked better than that. Lord, I, yeah, I know I ain't done one. I could have, some of y'all dancing, I, that was terrible. That's because you ain't on the program. So guess what? That's why God had you in the seat to expose why you need to be crucified. See, everything you speak against and if I used to speak again, I used to talk about gospel artists. Lord Jesus, that one ain't saved. That's too tight. That's, God said, that's why you're on the other side of the screen. And you're going to be on the other side of the screen, Rachel, for a long time until you learn how to shut your mouth. One of the things that Jesus did on the cross, he shut his mouth. The Bible says he never said a mumbling word. If he spoke, he spoke to his mother and he said, woman, if he spoke, he said, it is finished. But we got to open our mouth. I have to put my mouth on all kinds of people. Oh, she too big. Oh, she too skinny. Oh, she did. And the Lord said, that's why you're sitting where you're sitting. Because you're nasty. And that's not the order for the crown. You got a long time. I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to tell on me. You don't have to tell on yourself. But just be honest. That chilling spirit amongst us, that nasty spirit in the body of Christ, God has said, that's why I'm allowing you to be crucified. You're too jealous of other people anointed. You're too jealous of somebody weed. Go buy your own weed. Then buy one, get one. They're online. Anybody can get them. Go get some teeth. If you want some teeth, go to County Columbia. Anybody can look like a celebrity now. If you need a hip, go get a hip. If you need a foot, go get a foot. It's no reason why we're still jealous. Oh, 
If you suffer with me, I know that rain sounds good, but you gotta remember it's the it's the super, it's the it's the crucifixion. If you suffer, if you suffer, somebody say if I suffer. You know, I know your tongue got twisted on that part. Because you two are known it to, get, to suffer. You two are known it to suffer. You two are known it to suffer. So, yes, so so the third one is the spouse. Yeah, uh-huh. You do know a spouse can be a cross. You do know that, right? Yeah, you do know that a part of the weight that can be in your life could be someone not placed in your life. And, and you don't understand this. It doesn't really matter. Either way, you're going to wear a cross. Either way, listen, God told me this. This is getting on my nerves. God told me this years ago. He said, Rachel, listen to me. And he used my husband. He, he was a pastor, an early pastor at that time, both of us. And he began to walk, pick me up. You know, have you ever had somebody, they're praying, and the Holy Spirit lead them to you? And so, you know, I, I love, see, I love, I'm a person that dream. I see angels. I love just good, happy stuff. So when he got my hand, I was like, oh, I'm about to be blessed. Oh, God. And he was walking me. I was like, hallelujah. Because I love the spirit, y'all. I'm sorry. I love the spirit. So I was excited. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say, and I got to get to speak through him as well. And when I just saw this, literally, I don't, I'm not a person to see a bunch of open visions, very few in my lifetime. But I saw it, sis. It was like an open vision, and I was walking slow, broken, headed to be crucified. And I heard the spirit of the Lord. Some of you say you hear the spirit of the Lord, but let me tell you this. He's not an itching ear spirit. He can use you if you're broken. He's not always going to be talking about blessing. But he began to show me that you are required to die. He soberized my spirit. I didn't even want to hold my husband's hand no more. Because I don't want to die. I just want to preach. Come on, somebody. I don't want to be attacked. I just, oh, I know I'm not the only one. I just want to encourage people. Uh, I want to just be the one God to get the wood and place it on the fire. But when Paul did that, the viper came out of the fire. So if you're anointed, you're going to trap vipers. I'm telling you, you can't run from this thing. Don't pray for the anointed if you can't handle the reciprocity of the cross. Because it's coming. Tell somebody it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Some of us confused today because we don't know what in the world we're going through. I just sold a magnificent seed and I just blessed another ministry and now you're bankrupt. And now the bank is trying to sue you. Come on, somebody. And you, you're just confused because you don't understand the system of the spirit. There's going to be some suffering and God told me I was required to die. And Lord have mercy, Jesus, was he not lying? From that day to this day, he always reminded me there's a thorn that you can't pray away. Paul went to God thrice. He went to God and said, remove these, these, these. It's not just one. Come on, somebody. Who am I here for? It's not just one. It's one, two, three things that's getting on my nerve, that's buffing in my flesh. But God did not remove the thorn. He didn't remove the thorns from his own son. But you want God to remove the thorns from you. He said, God, do you remember what I'm going through? My grace is sufficient. His grace was sufficient for Jesus on the cross. His grace is sufficient for you. You got thorns, I got thorns, we got thorns. We might as have, well have, have a thorn party, y'all. The thorns, some of these thorns, so you don't want to hear a word from the Lord. They ain't going nowhere. Keep praying. Keep moving. And some of you, and let's be real, I'm about to end this whole thing. And you can get, you can get my uh, pulse out. Get a few of you. If you can hand these out, and we're going to play this song when I'm done. Honestly, you better be glad, please hear the Lord, that he have not removed your thorns. God did Paul a favor. Think about it, you all. If it was good for the thorns to be removed, why would God send his grace? God know that there's something else that's buffeted in Paul's flesh. So you don't understand God ain't moving your thorny son or your thorny husband because God know 
that you will be out of season. If he moved the pain, you'll backslide. If he moved the pain, you'll get off. You don't believe it, but guess what? The sign that you is still there tells the story of a sovereign God. He knows just what he's doing. So let's thank God for our stories. Come on, can we just give God a, a 10 second? Just thank, I know, I know it sounds crazy. I mean, oh, I took a shot. Hard, it's hard, it's hard. Hard, it's hard, it's hard to thank God for both. We want to thank God for a new house. We want to thank God for some new teeth. We want to thank God for a new weed. Come on, somebody. Thank God, thank God for a new church, a new building. But can you thank God for Thorne? You know that's what's holding you up. You know that's why you still saved, right? You know that's why you passed the test, Joseph, and you didn't sleep with Potiphar's wife. But you do know that there's a thorn, and the thorn that Joseph had was the thorn to know that he was betrayed and he was sold by his family. Come on, somebody. Can you imagine the mental anguish and grief? That your mother had died. Can you imagine the mental anguish and grief to be somebody else's country and was owned by your own family. God thorns for a reason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, he did. So, mental illness. I said mental illness, mental illness. And you can go ahead and begin, you can go ahead and begin to hand those out. I have some, I have the Holy Spirit instructed me, and I do apologize. The Holy Spirit instructed me with these handkerchiefs to write on each of these handkerchiefs. No cross, no crown. Everybody that would like one, you do not have to take one, can get one of these. And this is, it's no power in this. It's power in the Holy Ghost. But this is a point of contact. That when you begin to want to quit, because you do know that the body of Christ is being divided and are leaving God like never before. Don't let it be you. Let this conference cause you to tie yourself to the horns of the altar again. Some of you that are backsliders, you need to come back. You need to hear the clarion call of the Lord and tie yourself back to God. Come on, somebody. We're in a different world, different group. But you can put this on your, just like if you tie this, you can tie this around your wrist. Yeah, you can just do it real quick, not too tight. You can do that. Some people put it around. Y'all know old school. Put it in your pocketbook. It doesn't even matter where you put it. On your dress or under your weave. It don't matter. Wherever you want to put it. This, just remember, it's just a point of contact to remind you that if Jesus had to go through this order to get his crown, what you, what you mean, why you? Why not you? That's a sign. Your cross is a sign that you're... Your cross is a sign that you are loving of God. And you know we got an eternal crown as well. So mental illness one, and this can definitely be a but many people have overcome this. So we speak that in the atmosphere to get therapy, get prayer, do all that. Most of us are spiritual, we do all of that. But get a therapist. Come on, somebody. Do whatever you got to do to come through that process, okay? And then the last one, I think, I got one, yeah, two more. Children is a is a cross. Children can be, not saying they is, can be a cross. So you may have a son that's in, then you may have a son that's living an alternative lifestyle. You may have a son that's still from you. This all right. Come on, somebody. A son has cancer, is sick, a son this, this. But it, but for you, it's part of your cross. And so uh, one thing I didn't say, can you hand me that key? The Lord was showing me. That the key to your crown, this is in the middle. But the first, if you turn it around where they can see it, just hold it, turn it in front of them. Yeah. So the key to your crown comes from the cross. It comes from the cross. So that's a golden key that God is saying, I have for you. But quit trying to erase that. Quit trying to pray that away. That's necessary. That's necessary in order to get this. And when you have this, this is the golden key. Gets you the crown. So God bless you. I pray you stay the course. And we're going to, I'll read the last two and I'm done. Children can be a cross. Physical sickness can be a cross. That was my last one. And if you can, if everyone can stand in this building, I'm done. And thank you so much for this time. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you can stand in this place, if you're able to, this is a song by B.B. Winans called No Cross, No Crown. Did everyone already get there? Okay, wonderful. Okay, you got to give me a few. I have the 
um, you also, yeah? Okay, you, you can just bring them for me, yes. So listen, for those of you that still would like to get those handkerchiefs, anybody, I think they said a few more people that didn't receive any. Listen, do you need one for someone? Is there somebody sick? Is there somebody that's sick? Is there a son? You can take one for a son. We have more. I think we got at least 30 to 50 more of those that can be made. The ones we brought were the one I pre-done. But remember, it's a point of contact. It's something that you can grab a hold with your faith. It's tangible. And say, I remember the word that Pastor Rachel spoke about. And I'm in agreement with it. That it's part of a crucifixion. You can go to your son right now at the hospital and say, listen, listen. This may be part of your sickness. may be part of your cross. But listen, hold on, baby. There's a crown God has for you. Oh, oh, God. So if you can play that song real briefly. This is Vicky One. It's no cross. No, just a moment of worship while they're getting those. And I'm done. I'm the song simply over. says, if you can't stand a little disappointment, sometimes. If you can't stand to be talked about, sometimes. Some of us come to church and somebody come up and tell you you weave and then crooked. You go home and you stay three months. Girl, they didn't know you had your hair cut in the asymmetric. Come on back and give God some glory. If you can't stand to be talked about, sometimes, if you feel you should always be up and never die. Well, I came on over the way living the night to let you know no cross, sure ain't gonna get no crown. If you can stand a little disappointment sometimes, can't stand to be talked about sometimes. You think you should always be. Thank you. 
great God to sacrifice a selfless God. Oh, 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 oh,
hear, I heard you moaning. I heard you complaining. God said, go. Why? Because it's complicated. It's complicated. You're having some complications. In your spirit, trying to give up. You're trying to get up. You're trying to throw in the towel. You're looking back in the past. Trying to say, Lord, not me. But oh, Lord, God. Say, why not you? And who you gonna tell me? To get pregnant. Did you not get it? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Did you not get it and pray? Did he not pray for it? Did you not pray for that thing? Come on, that right now you're fighting. That you're fighting. Did you not pray for it? Did you not pray for it? Did you not cry for it? Did you not fast for it? Did you not do these things? Why you complaining? What's it not kidding? What's it when you came and you spent time with me? There was conception that took place. But now you whine. It's not coming as quickly as you want it to. It's not coming how you think it should. Because you're too busy looking at somebody else's baby. You're too busy. It's pulling me into patience. It's 
putting me into an attitude that will bring him glory. It's putting me into a place where I don't want to be the first word I say in a cuss word. I heard you in my room. I heard you in my room. Don't play with me. I heard you in my room. It's been a blasphemy. It's a box off. You want to do all this, but then we want to come up here unclean. Come on. Not purified. Don't want to die. Don't want to suffer. But we want the benefits. God told me, he said, I don't do no entitlement. They ain't entitled. Just because you put on a good Christian badge. Pain. Betrayal. Wounds. Rejection. Oh, pain ain't bad. Pain. If you're going to burn this thing out, you're going to have to go to some pain. He's going to press you. He's going to cut you. Pain. Distress. I'm fearful. Extreme anxiety. I have to pray to go out the house. Because I'm still, still afraid of getting COVID. Come on, don't play with me. I'm still afraid, but see, you ain't afraid. Come on, you still want the house because you got a job. But you, come on, I'm not tell you anymore. But when God moves you and pulls you into a place of prayer at night, you tired. We don't, don't understand. You already got some complications. Because you don't want to come into the presence where the all knowing God knows everything concerning you. I told you I didn't come for everybody. I come from those that are on the verge of being up, on the verge of walking out, walking back, picking up and picking up their own vomit. I come from those when it's very in their will. And very in our will doing. Yeah. 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 It's way more. Isaac with the Lord half of his wives because she was unable to have children. You pity the God. God, if you do this, I will do this. God, if you heal my body, I serve you. Y'all know what we do when we need desperate, desperate situations. If you say, I'll do this, and God said, I did that, so where's your, 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 I did it. And where you at? He prayed. Because she looked like she wasn't having no baby. But what you got to understand is the baby got to come. You got to get pregnant. Why? Because if you go into Genesis 15, God promised Abram, come on. He promised him that he will make him a great nation. God told me to tell you, you know what you care. Let's keep reading. That's how the devil trying to make you give up. Prematurely, because you don't know what you're carrying. Because if you knew what you were carrying, you keep on, keep on praying, you keep on reading, you keep on fasting, you keep on reading, you keep on being in faith, you keep on trusting God in
in nine months. Because I have a 14 empire, so people just want to have a pound of pants. 
because y'all walk in power. But I take it. I look like that. Go through. 
You got to endure. You got to endure this like what? Good soldiers. Hardship like good soldiers. Where are the soldiers? Where are the soldiers? Where are the ones that won't break break? Where are the ones? I got to kill man. I'm a prophet. I see man. I've been in the cave. Y'all better come out the cave. I told him, I said, you come out the cave. Because you've been in there acting like a cave man, cave woman. When you come out, I'm going to buck you up. Slap your head with my, come on, with this, uh, uh, what's it called? That club. You ain't even been purified. Oh, yeah. Carry natural shit down. Yeah. Now they come to play. We come to shake a reason. We come to shake a reason. We come to shake a reason. Sit down and shut up. Why? It's dangerous when you try to come and put on a mask. You better ask Joseph. Come on. Put that thing on prematurely. And now can I tell you? You're a prophesier. You're operating in the gift. Why? Because you have not come to the presbytery and allowed yourself to be examined. When you have a baby, I don't see nobody getting up on the table having a baby by yourself. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. Ask me if I care. Ask me. Ask me. No. I'm gonna tell me something crazy. Guys, you What you supposed to do? I can change one touch for three times. He told you to tell you that. He told you to tell the pastor. He told you. He told the kindergarten. Prophetic shout. Oh, you step over into the prophet or the apostle and mantle. Let's another one. 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 Let's another one.
says, I mean, like email TV. Pay careful attention to your own work. Is that in your Bible? Pay careful. You say pay attention. Pay careful attention to your own work. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. When you pay your you keep your own boat or be on your own lane. Don't be over somebody else. Don't be comparing yourself. God has something special for you. Now let's get back to this too. I just want to help somebody with that because somebody compare themselves hard. Up. Mm-hmm. And if some of y'all think because y'all have had triumph situations, you try to open some situations, then you can come, you can tell people how to take you through this next situation. Yeah. It's hard when you've had four or five kids in the natural, and then you go back to the doctor that you want to be the doctor. Can you give me some medicine? No. What can you do? No. Well, it's painful. Change positions. Now I'm like my 
my candle when I go into prayer. And I got candles in the church. And I'm like, incense. What is going on? I'll talk about the body now. I'm going to jump off y'all for a minute. I'll talk about the body now. We come have to I mean, it's only a few people that have cute deliverances. But now, hell of a mess. We go there without makeup on. We good, right? Some of us get real good. Now the wider face, like, oh! Oh! Get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. I need an epidural. Y'all said you ain't need no epidural. I need a pill. Go home, nigga. Swallow. I'm going to give you a whole book of pills. Sick and sick. Get a whole lot of mercy. You're going to be taking good care of us. But I can't swallow. I'm going to swallow it. Who about that? I'm just watching people. I'm 
sitting here. Okay. Then, then, then the doctor said, get up with me. I got up and I left. I walk into my car. Why do I see some little Arab man? Who got a little blanket? Get down on his knees, lift his hand and bow to his God. Brother oh Donnie, we can't even get you in the house. We got to resort to giving for the saving of your soul and die. And if sin he turns into a burning hell, oh, be miserable. So you ain't gonna go to hell. Let's get that out of the way. Let you go to on the earth and God has so much better for you because you don't want to go through the process. You don't want to carry twins. You don't want to carry baby. And then his little wife. Well, look, get up. When they, when they look, y'all carry, I think y'all carry three kids around with y'all. Well, y'all serious. serious. We ain't serious. Yeah. We cry and complain. If the pastor did not call me around my girl. Okay. I had to go to school in the morning. My children got to go to school. It's summertime. Whatever lie you're going to tell me. <laughs> Oh, that's right. They got to go. Stop lying. Lying is in here. Stop lying. I'm serious. We can't stay under the weight of the word because we're sleeping now. We can't. To what y'all want to hear. Rebecca. I lost my page. Okay. It says, but the two children snuggled with each other in her womb. So she went to ask the Lord about it. You go to ask the Lord about it when they start getting uncomfortable. Y'all, what's going on? Why is this happening to me? Can I help you? Because you're just being considered. You ain't arrived yet. You're just being considered. And now you about to make God put a stop. Delay, but not deny. You about to make God put a stop. You can do whatever you want to do. Mm. On you, because you say, I, I don't want to do this. That God wants to happen to me. Be considered. You just took the consideration now, and God will put it on side. You ain't ready yet. I'm going to let you go through what you're going to go through. Until you bop your head on the wall. Oh and then you come run to the altar. That's why saints get in trouble. That's why trouble sometimes come the ways of saints. Because they don't want to be obedient. Rebellion. Rebellious. You asked for it. Now you're asking God, why is it happening to me? Why not you? And the Lord told her, the sons in your womb will be two nations. What are you carrying? They say all the time, we'll call it the nation. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your fruit? <laughs> Where's your evidence? Wow. Because when you walk in with God, there's evidence. Yes. He's a multiplier. He increases. Yes. Oh. From the very beginning, nations will be right. One nation will be stronger than the other. And the other older son will serve the other. And when this woman gets to 24, and when the time came to give birth, some of the time has come. Rebecca discovered that she did indeed have twins. You need support. You cannot do this by yourself. Come off the island. Come off the island of independence. Come off the island of I know everything. I'm Jesus Junior. See her. See You see a lot, but your spirit is fine. Can I help you? Sometimes you see too much. And sometimes you get confused. I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, I don't know why I am. Sometimes you get confused. Why? Because you have a gift, but you have not yet been called into the gift. Placed into the gift. There's a place there. And you don't know how to tell the difference between your voice, 
God's voice and the devil's voice. Not yet. But if you stay in this thing, elephant, carry this vision, carry this ministry, carry it. Don't try to mimic nobody else. Be your authentic you. That's why I got these socks on. They always match. <laughs> but I gotta move. I just ain't, I said, y'all got it. I'm like, oh, Jesus, I see y'all. Can you give me the grace to let it heal my thing? He said, no. So I gotta take the socks off because I gotta move. I'm gonna have to jump off this platform and run down and snap a double in the face. <laughs> We come to get you free. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's time to push. We have put you into a place where now it's safe for you and your vision. Birthing in a difficult time. You don't have to lose you. You don't have to lose what you carry. Jesus. You hear what I'm saying? It's what the Lord told me to tell you. You don't have to lose out of the water if you just get under. Get under. Stop trying to worry about what's going on down there. And worry about what's going on up here. Learn how to think. Mm, I've got to go. You don't even think right. We don't love rhymes. But God said today, He's going to grace you. This grace. This grace, because we're all undeserving. This grace. Because He's seen your pain, He's seen your cries, He's seen your tears, He's seen your hurt. But can I tell you, if you don't have a leader, you better find one now. And submit. And obey. I count everything that I've been through as done. I know nothing. When I talk to my overseer, I know. And I don't say this vocally, but I'm an apostle. I went through and I got the stripes to prove it. I got all that. But when I talk to my leader, and my, own, my spiritual mother, I submit. I sit at a table and I act like a little child. I know nothing. I speak when I'm spoken. You say, well, that's controlling. What my question is, did you pick your leader? Did God pick her? If God picked a child, it's all right. It's all right. You don't want to miss. You don't want to miss what the true prophets are saying. It's 11.59 in this time. You don't want to miss your time to die. You don't want to miss your time. It ain't about that at this point. It's time to tick, tick, tock, tock, tick, tick, tock, tock, tick, tick, tock, tock, tick, 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 tock, tock, tick, tick, tock, tock, tick, tick, tock, tock, timing of the Lord. If you miss your timing, you don't know when it's gonna come back around. Do you have another 15 years? Do you have another five years? We don't even know what the world's gonna be. Do we have another year? Playing with your your destiny. Why are you playing with your purpose? Why are you playing with your life? I don't care how old you are. You've been in too much church and there's somebody in here and say, if you have gone through the church five times, those who have gone through the door of the church five times, you know better. Hello? We come to conferences trying to get food, but we get sugar until God sends somebody, sends somebody to give you food and then you get mad. And now you got spiritual diabetes and spiritual this and spiritual that. And then you don't want, oh my God. Now you're trying to cut me. Not that I can go. All right, I love y'all. The class told me why. Because I want to see what you do after this. What's going to happen when you go home? Can you maintain it? 
Can you stay in it? Because if you can't, where do we come? If it wasn't to really hear from God through his mouthpieces, y'all, I'm telling you this about the Spirit of the Lord. Stay off Facebook.
Did they tell you I was a plumber? <laughs> I asked God, I said, God, this is I need your grace. What you see is just grace. Ask him to grace you through this. His grace is sufficient. Lift your hands. I'm going to give the mic to you. Lift your hands. His grace is sufficient. For you. Lift your hands over the eyes. Pray in the spirit now. Young lady, pray in the spirit. Louder. Because see the tones of war and fire got to come out your belly. I stand the fire. I stand the fire. I can burn. Yes. 
for your deliverance. She fought for your liberty. The soundness of mind to come to you. Let's all get a seat for her now. For every drop of virtue that left her body. For every intentional move that she made to see you free. Come on, let's create a bed of worship for her to lie out of. Come on, let's slow down just a little bit. Let's create a bed. He gives his blood sleep, let's create a bed.
when the clean hands and pure hearts of the McLeods besought you for your order and for your way to be made. You heard their cry. You heard their plea. And there, you legislatively said, only if the people meet the requirements shall it be done. Requirements of repentance, requirements of sacrifice, requirements of laying down ourselves, requirements of giving up what we know, requirements of accepting the cross before trying to gain the crown. Father, I stand apostolically to say, I believe the people of God here met the requirements for every jail cell to be released, every door to be opened that no man can shut, every way made that only you can get the glory for. Father God, I present this people and I say, if you are pleased with the decrees, the petitions that you heard from us over the months, release them. I stand asking you to release them from everything that binds them, thought processes, ideologies, the way and methods that they learn, behaviors from church, Father God, how they act out and how they still live through the abuse. I ask, Father, by your spirit now that they have met the requirements, would you please release them? You said that you've come to set the captive free. And so, Father, according to your son's name, Redeemer, King of kings, Lord of lords, wonderful counselor, Jehovah Child, but would you, would you please them? That strongholds cannot keep them after today. That even when they slip and when they go after the crown before they have really redeemed themselves, Father, would you remind them that you release them to holiness? You release them to liberty. You release them to freedom already. So we will not return to our vomit. We will not become yoked again with the yoke of bondage, Father, in our minds and in our souls. We want to be released. And so, Father, I want to present them. And if you're here in this room and you feel like you've been released, would you meet us on what we have called the altar? If you want to stand before the righteous judge and say, Lord, as my final offering. Come and meet me on the altar. Let's just line across and be seen by the judge. Oh God, I say. If you want to be released, if you need your face to see your heart, to deserve your motives, this hasn't been of the clouds only. This has been before. The judge has been before the righteous judge. This parts of heaven. This has been before a holy God. I don't know what to say. I'm speaking tongue. When I know I've been guilty, sometimes I just got to hear. When I know I've been guilty and I know I didn't please the Father. Oh, God. When you get for mercy and justice is getting ready to come. Y'all know for my LC, y'all know. Get on the I present my heart to them. We present the people of God to you, God. Believe that they have right motives and a God agenda. I'm going to give you just about 30 seconds to go ahead and ask the, the courts of heaven to be released. Go ahead. Why don't you lift up a tongue? Give him praise. Give him the fruit of your mouth. Give him the fruit of your mouth. Lord, release me. Come on, make your own statement. Come on, to give your own case. I know I wasn't always right. I, I know 
I didn't do it right. I, I was trying to hurry up the crowd. But, but Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that by the walls of heaven, you will receive my heart. You will receive my deliverance and that you will set me free.
proceed to open door. Your new opportunity. I'm going to ask if the apostles would just stand in agreement. And the prophets of God, there's some prophetic release. There's a prophetic release. There's a prophetic release. The countries haven't seen you yet. Necessary. I'm going to take you to the Bahamas intentionally. There's some family you need to meet. England needs to hear the tune of you. Before if we stay too long, we get frustrated. Ministering to the same people that need the same word. And so God will open up doors and release us to countries before we change the word to frustration. And we begin to share the sheep somewhere nearby. So he'll take you to some places that they're worshiping for four hours and they don't get tired of it. And he's preparing you for an international movement. Even as he's preparing the apostles, these apostles have to go, they have to go, they have to go, they have to go, they have to go.
God says, I'm taking out Shay Okasa. Hey, shut up. He said, I'm taking out the story heart. Hey, blah, 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 blah. And I'm giving you a heart of gold. He said, You've been in the fire long enough. Come out. Hey, blah, 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 so yeah. Hey, my so good shit. Come out this way. Stop hiding. You've been comfortable too long. God says, I didn't skip over that generation. I didn't forget about you. Is this your mommy? Says, uh, he said, I don't know about Soya. As I looked her out on this edge, I hope I said, if I see I don't go south, if I saw I said, it was inside you. Hey, come on, lift up your voices. If you got your energy language, Work here. You don't mind what? Girl, I know that was shocking. 
Joshua, you got to be obedient. Right? Because everything they have gone through, it don't exist. Not for you. Okay? You understand? Hello? Talk back to me. I'm a kid. I got four. I like you too. Okay? You cannot not obey God. I'm cheating right now. I might get in trouble for it. But the last parent I told this, listen, for the next certain 30 days, make sure your child puts down the video games in XYZ. She was disobedient. And so spirit came into him. And they had to hospitalize him. They thought he was losing his mind. He tried to commit suicide. You won't do that, right? But I'm just kidding you. God told me to tell you this. Because it's not me. I can care less. I'm being honest. And the spirit came upon him. Because he's called to, he's called to minister. And, and God was like, no, I'm not waiting. I'm telling you now. This is what you need to do for the next days or so many days. However many days God told me to tell him. And the spirit came upon him. And it fully manifested. I, I've never seen anything like this. Like for real. In the life of a 15 year old. Never seen it before. Manifested in my presence on the, on, on Duo. And I told her, I said, girl, I want to call it out. But God told me to let it sit there. It said, no, God. I said, let it sit there. You must. You must obey. Because we hear this often, but it's real. There's nations inside of you. And so it's twofold. It's ministry and it's marketplace. And God says you're going to, I see your height, but God says you're going to walk in the earth. And so, can you make your hands? Spirit of the living. For fresh on Joshua. Hey, I shall go shed it. That I might so too go shine. His wife is holy. His children. Are with God. Manifest the glory in his life. Come on, receive the word, Joshua. Can I you lift your hands and then I'm And me, she lift your hands. Lift your hands, me, she. The prophetic is in you. Me, she. Since you were a little boy. And everything that you see and bore witness to. God told me to tell you right now that it has not been designed to get you off course. Hear me? God says, when your mother and your father forsake you, I think that God is working with you. There's power in you. You're going to have to pray. Even if it's just God, I'm here. And that's it the first time. And then the next time, God, I'm here again. And then the third time, God, I'm here. What would you have me to do? What would you have me to say? Because the word of God is in your belly. Can I lift your hands? This is my seat. Well, not my seat, but my husband's seat, my baby. God says, I put love in you so people that I got to cause 
the people that come around you to fall off. Not by me. I mean, I'm nice. And God says, don't, don't second guess yourself. God said, I put something inside of you that I won't allow to be contaminated. So God says, the songs I hear you, Lord, the songs that you sing, the music notes that you see in your dreams. God says, I won't let your voice get contaminated. God said, you'll sing for me. And I, and I hear this not because you're my child, but I see a record deal. And God says, it's not for the arena that you desire to sing for. God says, can I, you're going to sing for me. And that's it. Yeah. God says, when you open your mouth, angels. Angels will fill the room. He says, I belong to you. And you belong to me. I don't have to lay my hands on the three of you. Because there's something so pure cool about each of you. That God says, I'm touching you today. Amen. Every ounce of wisdom, every word of knowledge, 
being back to you a hundredfold. God bless you for the work you do for him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I've been there. You don't know the cost of the oil that these leaders out of that box that cost. I've been there where literally I had to pray for so many people at the end I about passed out. And you just don't know how God will allow a vessel to stand flat footed, to lay hands on every single individual. You don't know the virtue that comes out of that person's body. But we're grateful to God that he has poured and is refilling in this woman's release conference in Jesus' name. Apostle. So direct and on point. And I'm forever grateful. Thank you. We just came back from the Bahamas. Four days, five days later, we went to Columbia, Cali, Columbia. And we were talking about buying some property in the Bahamas, Costa Rica, or one of these Caribbean islands. That was me and my wife discussion on the way back from Columbia. I told the church they think I'm still playing. But I'm so serious. And I'm grateful to God that the vision of the Lord will not go dormant because along with vision, God gives those, and I, I heard the word, um, that those that are coming behind the vision will have to move swiftly. I, I, I wholeheartedly receive that. Thank you for your words. Thank you for obeying God. Say it again. Ah, well, um, as far as title, no. But my wife has been saying this. Uh, my late apostle has said it. But no matter. I have some questions. Maybe the walking is Pastor <laughs> Rachel, uh, you have any? You want to remark to them? Have I been running from the apostolic? Yes. <laughs> we are definitely birthed out of apostolic, um, apostolic ministry, and we flow apostolic. Yes. Although we're not going to be non-denomination. But that was just so direct, and um, we received those words also concerning the apostolic organization being established in the Bible as well. So, well, what made one of you hear it? I don't, I'm not, I mean, I'm, 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 I, I sense that God is going to use us. It is. We, apostolic roots are deep, deep. Miracle side one just became up and were first up. Through an apostolic organization. Absolutely. The church is coming out of an era where first it was all titles. Exactly. And then the charismatic evangelicals brought in I'm Bob, you're Joe, you're Carol. Yeah. But behind the scenes, they were orchestrating the next apostolic group. Mm -hmm. So much so that it had the hands from the presidency. What God wants to do now is to ensure not only the activation of the gifts. But his, his titles are in the earth, so that what we expect out of people is based upon Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Absolutely. And so we are returning to saying, I am called an apostle, not for title's sake, but so that my works can be watched and monitored by those who walk in the apostolic. Because what they did was they went behind the scenes mm -hmm. and tried to rule our nation. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. We will come forth and say, 
to God be the glory and for the kingdom I live and for the kingdom I die. Yeah. And I have no hands on reins of presidential elections, mm -hmm. which then try to manipulate an entire people. We lost a third of God's prophets because of that. Right. And so in this era, this post pandemic era, we will come forth and say, we are the apostles of God, we are the prophets of God. We've come to do the Lord's bidding, the, Lord. the King's agenda. And so your quote unquote fear of, I don't need to be bad so that I'm not, is an old paradigm as well. Mm -hmm. Because your children are waiting for you to go up to make it up to the next Dearly, however, his voice rings behind my ears every single day. And I kept my dad as well. So I received those words dearly to my heart. Thank you so very much. Speaking of the center, thank God for you guys. This year, that's your producer. When is when is she gonna do a full project? Working on that. You have a projected date for the release. August. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, oh, she said fallish. I thought she said August. You heard August? It could be it could be a going back to school project for the when y'all start back school up here in Virginia, August or September. Okay, let me let me just say there the hand of God is upon your life. Um, to carry out ministry, to carry out work, the understanding that you have as a young lady, what worship is, is beyond years. There has to be genuine vessels and voices. When I see you in the spirit, I see a Jacqueline card. Yes. 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 And the anointing of God that rested upon that young lady, she's still a young lady. Yes. The hand of the Lord is upon you. 
but it is certainly indeed for his glory. Continue to pull people closer to him by the words you express out of your mouth by way of song. I asked about a project because it's your time. Number two, you know I got one more I can get to now. You stand up for me. That's my favorite from Green. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I, 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 I heard the Lord say to you one word, and that word was ministry. That was a strong call. You're still figuring some things out. What am I called to? What do I click with? What do I, what's my cadal? What what do I attach to? And as you continue to pray, while you're standing there, I looked at you and heard the word ministry. You're going to find your release. Ministry, and I'm not talking about being a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, or prophetess. Your ministry release or your release will be in ministry, period. Whether it's media, whether it's technology, whether it's photography, whatever is whatever you're doing, make sure you're doing it for ministry, and you're gonna find a release. Okay? Uh, Blair, last one. You're a true millionaire. Now, sincerely, stand up for me really quick, really quick. You know I'm not bringing y'all away to Virginia and put you on the spot. True millionaire. I looked at you two or three times, and I heard the word millionaire, millionaire, millionaire. Three times. I don't speak words to flatter ears, but you are a true millionaire. I'm telling you, as I'm looking at you, keep blazing the trail that you're blazing. And watch what God do in your life. He's doing a great work in you, in Jesus' name. Let's thank God for these three years. Good. Next time I'm in Virginia, I need to hear something. I need to see something. Okay, um, I'm, 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 I'm Pastor McLeod, the scripture he read, I said, oh, I only have to read it because that's the same scripture I wrote down to read. So I'll just elaborate real quickly. I said, oh, I told my wife, oh, people will show you or tell you after something happens. I think that's what Apostle said, don't come after something happens. You say, oh, the Lord showed me that. So I showed everybody, I said, look at it, he doesn't take everything I have. So. But um, as a matter of fact, let me not go there since you said it so perfectly clear. Um, <laughs> I'm, 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 Jesus looked at her, the scripture said, when he looked at her, this woman was afflicted, this woman uh, was bent over, this woman was struggling. But when he looked at her, the her he was looking at, follow me here, he saw a stand up, upright woman. When he saw her. He said to her, and this is what Bishop Jakes became so famous of, this saying, woman, thou art loose. Remember he used to do that? Woman, thou art loose. Loose and the amplifier does says you are released. So I want to let you know, woman, he see you. No matter what has had you been over, no matter what has had you tangled up, under, oppressed, possessed, he see you. And when he saw her, he said to her, one last thing that we'll offer to God. Women, you're released. I'm a results man. Now what? Now what? Now what? The scripture 
scripture lets us know that he brought them out to take them in. So you're released from, you just came out of something, depression, frustration, anxiety, poverty. Your mind was closed for the clarity of vision, but now you can see. He just brought you out. Now what? You're released. Now what? But now what? There was a threefold thing in Exodus of Deuteronomy where he brought them out of Egypt that represented bondage, slavery, from under the Pharaoh. That's from under satanic control. And his household. Every imp and devil that's connected with the move of satanic influence. He brought them out from all of that. Threefold. Three, four, three. To give them three things. He brought them out. Number one, to take them in. He brought them out was number one. To take them in was number two. And to give them the land was number three. So it was a three, four, three. Get everything God has for you. Woman, thou art loose. Hear it in James' voice. All right, we're going to offer to God and we're going to be a blessing. We're going to show reciprocity for the word of the Lord. Yeah, you can, you can believe God is happy. We're going to show reciprocity for everything that has gone on here. Man, you guys, this right here was uh, priceless. Priceless. I have some ways to give they gave me, but I want you not to just grab anything. There are some people, and I teach back in North Carolina, don't be the one that eats real good and then run out before you pay. In the natural, you, some of you, if you, if that fit you, you are the one that the restaurants had to change the way they do things. Pay first before you eat. Now, some people will get powder food, powder food, eat and then run. But we're going to bless the house of God with this work. And we're going to show God I so thank you that you have given me something my money cannot buy. So the center, we're going to start this offer with $300. If anyone want to follow us, please do that. If you can't, it was $2.99. If you can't, do what you can do, but please pray before you reach. Okay? Pray before you reach. What was this worth to you? Nobody knows what you were going through before you got here. And nobody knows what awaits you when you get back home. What was this worth to you? So, with that in mind, I want you to go ahead and put your hands on it. And he's, here's, here's, do you, you guys still accept cash, correct? Okay. So that one's on the list. Okay, here. Okay, that, that's when they're going to drop the cash. All right. So here it is. If you don't have cash, they gave me these ways to give here. And here we go. Cash app. You do know that's the dollar sign. Heal Church. Is that correct, Pastor? Heal Church. Cash app, dollar sign, Heal Church. Another way is Givelify. And this is a, the first time I've heard that. We're going to have to look into that when we get back home. Givelify. Uh, and that is our PSS Heal Empowered.org on Givelify. Okay. Healing. Okay, go on Givelify. You have that Healing Empowerment Church. She said it'll pop right up. Okay. 
God's got a way that oh so sweet. Old school saints used to leave their cash in the car. Get out of office. We got you here. Give the five. Cash app. And of course, the good old cash. Let's be a blessing because coming from a senior leader, um, I know the cost behind a move like this. Okay? We have held many conferences and many revivals and many different things. People go home blessed, some get saved, some are delivered. But we know the financial movement, the financial part. So let's stand if you can. I want to bless this offering. Anyone with cash? Anyone with cash? Okay, we got okay, good. We got some cash on. If they're writing the check, who will they write the check to the pastor? Healing is power of the church. If they're writing the check. So that's about four or five ways you can give. Healing and power of the church. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Did you want to put them in there? Okay. okay, let's do this while he's passing out. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God that the anointing of the Lord will come upon your seed and multiply it. Thank God for businesses, business owners, prosperity, elevation in ministry. We're believing God for all of that. So, with that being said, Father, we thank you. We glorify you. Great is the Lord and great to be praised. Everything that has happened to us that was good, we know you did it. And Father, we want to say thank you. Not just from our mouth, but Father, we believe that where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. We want to show you we want to show you by our deed and by our financial offering to you today that we thank you for release. We thank you for these pastors, Joseph and Latonya McLeod. We pray, oh God, that heaven will open even financially like never before. And Father, even as this day comes to a close, but never end, because we believe it continues even after today. We desire and we believe that only you can do my God will be done today. Thank you for the release. Release of pressure. Release of stress. Release of pain. Release of bitterness. Release of anger. Release of jealousy. Thank you for the release. Thank you for the release. Thank you for the release. Tebo Shandi, yes, Lord. Thank you for the release. We believe it. We receive it. We believe it. And we receive it. We believe it. And we receive it. In Jesus' name. If you know your release, shout out to God right now. Come on. Shout out to Him right now. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Hallelujah. My God, according to who's standing beside you, this is going to be male or female. Just look at him and say, Woman. Woman. Of course, it's even man. Say, Woman. Woman. Thy art release. Yes. Release that heart. Release that heart. Release that heart. I feel a shot. I feel a shot. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
peace. Don't go back. Don't go back. You're released. In Jesus' name. You can have any direction you would like for us to come or just, just to go and walk. Wow. Oh, I, y'all praise the Lord. I should have a connection. Okay. Uh, let's start from the rear. Oh, my right. Oh, my right. If you, if you have a or if you want to come, take y'all to open food. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. You're released. You're released. Yeah, just follow right through. That's it. Just follow right around. Just old school here. You're released. That's what I see. Oh, blessings to you, bro. trying to help us and they took tours and I know it was God and they were trying to coach us we were asking them how can we buy property and they were trying to coach us and we were talking about finding someone to buy some property in the Bahamas or Costa Rica or Colombia so we certainly yeah. would get with you with that Yama yeah love it all right love you guys pastors Joseph Latanya love you guys so very much uh you guys are released I'm released now don't let the men get more loose than the woman, because it was a woman's conference, but I will receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive the angels of this conference. Pastors, what's about? Thank you. 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 Thank and I can't close out today without honoring God for my kingdom mother. Yeah, God. God bless you, my biological mother, my husband, and our families. But through her, and, and God just, how we met, that's a whole other story. But then kingdom mom linked us up through a service. Actually, she had a, during 2020, during the pandemic, she had this, it was, it was dope like a pop-up type ministry type thing. We went from one page to the next. It was bananas. I'm sorry, y'all. Just me. And there were many women on, on that um, program. But Pastor Latanya and I connected. I connected when I heard a voice. 
It was a it was a divine connection. And I'm so humbled to be her little sister. I'm the big sister. <laughs> She's the big sister. And I give her so much honor that when she talks, I'm quiet. I listen because there's so much wisdom and grace in the both of them. They are amazing people. I grew up in Virginia. Can I share this? I grew up here. Apostle St. Clair told me I will never be overlooked again. I grew up here. I know exactly where I am. Um, Mount Tresmore, right down the street. And I used to cut the road up the street. And I grew up in ministry. And I've always been overlooked. So it took God. And I come from a family of preachers and pastors. Very well known in this state. My grandfather got the keys to the city. But overlooked. Because it wasn't my time. And so God brought her here to help me. She not to go to So I honor God for how He connected me to Kingdom Mom to connect me to her. And so I honor you, such a woman of grace, such a man of grace, very humble people. And so when I say, let us put our hands together, because of what it took for them to work this, oh, it took much. It took much, much warfare, but we don't hear about. Much consecration. And so we thank God and honor God for this. And I must say to you prophetically that I don't see a hotel next year. I don't see a hotel. I don't see a church building. But God says that I see, I literally almost see, it's it's very similar to the scope. And God says that I brought the two of you here. People are going to begin to come to your ministry. They're going to begin to look for the two of you. Because you're not, there's they're, the religious spirit that is here in this state. People have been looking for a place to be delivered. People have been looking for a place where they can grow. But they're looking for the next dimension, the next wave of glory that the two of you are about to birth out in this city, in this region. And so I declare today, right now, as I stand here, I call for Chesapeake, residents of Virginia Beach, residents of Portsmouth, residents of Norfolk, residents of Newport News, and residents of Hampton to come to your ministry. I see the building. I see it filled full. And God says the work that is in your mouth, it's going to shake this region. Dry bones. Dry bones. So I ask of you today, so put your hands together and give my sister and my brother a, a loud triumphant sound. I did not share, but I will share today. Um, but I want to thank you all for coming. Um, you know, leading up to on the release, I, you know, the attacks were coming left and right. Um, in many ways, even down to my body, and we can't. And I'm glad to enjoy it joy because God is yeah. And while planning one of the release, God began to give me other uh, seeds of the ministry that he kept dropping in my spirit. My husband's like, well, one day at a time, baby. I must share this. A few things. You were just prophesying and ministering, but 
what you did not know is that the Lord dropped into my spirit um, community revival. And so it's bigger than what I would have thought. I'm thinking, well, with the attacks that I'm going through, God, I don't think I feel like going out into the city. And, right? <laughs> but the Lord gave me to have citywide revival. And I'm like, okay, Lord. So I had to call the city of Chesapeake. Hallelujah. And it was a while before the city of Chesapeake got back to me. But when they got back to me, they were telling me all of the ins and outs and giving me instruction and uh, concerning our church and having uh, the uh, the uh, park of the city, was it city, Chesapeake City Park, which is a very nice, beautiful park for those that do know. And he gave us, the, the city of Chesapeake gave us the call for next year. And when he was explaining to me, he said, you can have the stage and everything. And he said, and there's gonna be power on the stage. And I said, what? He said, there's gonna be power on the stage. But what he doesn't know is that the Lord gave us power in the city. That's the title. And so power in the city, power in the city, outside the four walls revival. And I'm still considering the cost because what it costs here today. But when he said there's going to be power on the stage, instead of just saying there's going to be lights or electricity, he said there's going to be power. Exactly. So with that being said, next year, I hope y'all stay tuned because we're having power in the city of Chesapeake. Hallelujah. 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 apostles, pastors to bring forth revival and to win the city. Yeah. One other thing, save the date for those who did get their packets of one release next year is already in play. Amen. And I hope that you all will join us again. Hallelujah. And I forgot to mention one thing. We have Miss Charlene Aaron. Hallelujah. And her beautiful daughter, happy birthday to you on tomorrow. <laughs> Miss Charlene Aaron, are you the founder of the SEMA Network? Amen. The founder of the SEMA Network in Newport News, Virginia. Amen. Let's give it up for her. Hallelujah. I think my mom, my family, apostle. Uh, Providence, Brother Gary, the worship team, Brittany, and the moon. Amen. Thank you so much. Our staff outside, the usher securities, we thank you. Pastor Ronald, Pastor Rachel, we love you. We're already church family. It's already a wrap. It's already done. Apostle. Can I just share the story? It was many years ago, I lived in Houston, Texas, right? And I was going through a really rough time, and I went to a church, hallelujah, and the church assigned her to my life. She did things for me in private as far as her giving food and helping me. I have to say it because I'm humble, I, it, is, it is what it is. Sometimes we'll need help, right? Out of her heart, she would take me to the grocery store pick up my children from school and never say a word and I say it openly because when I look back over my life I can truly say that I've been blessed an apostle is no joke what you see is what you get she loves in person and private and in public she walks with God and she helped me in a very trying time and I honor you and I know you and I appreciate you and I appreciate you all. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. You know, I've had a mentor a long time ago. Say so God is always doing more than one thing in one event. And I sit and I sat and I witnessed every single person in here. Get some type of touch, some type of ministry that was very personal. And it just reminded me of how much God loves us. 
God will look at you and say, you know what? If no one else existed, I'm coming for you. I got a word for you. I got breakthrough for you. Whether you be a man or whether you be a woman, God says to you, you are released. And you see, I, I, I witnessed confirmations. I witnessed women who fell out and they were going through their transitional process to get delivered. I witnessed in the realm of the spirit restorations, reconciliations. I witnessed people receiving the liberty that God has been attempting to give them for a long time so that they can walk in the freedom of walking in their purpose. You see, God has a plan and a purpose for all of our lives, and he's bringing us to a place even greater, but he spoke to us today. And I was so gladly, so godly, proud, and privileged to be in this atmosphere, to see how God moved. God is always doing more than one thing out of one circumstance. Even my kingdom mom. And I want to give honor to my kingdom mom and my kingdom father, yeah. Apostle Otis Caldwell, who has poured into me. Both have poured into me. They knew me back when I was in college. Back in my college days, they would come out to a ministry on campus. Messenger Annette Caldwell and her husband, Bishop Caldwell, would come out and minister to us. And now here we are today. Amazing. God is always doing more than one thing out of one circumstance. Even those who participated, and we want to give credit and thanksgiving and appreciation to the staff. Yeah. Put your hands together for that staff. <laughs> those who were behind the scenes, the cameraman, the photographers, the security, those who sat at the registration table, the ushers, of course, the worship team once again. Those who have ministered. If someone fell out, they were laying over the cross. We want to thank God for Sister Tamara. We thank God for her ministry. She blessed my wife. She came all the way from New Jersey to be here to bless us. We appreciate you. We thank you. Sister Lisa, her and her, and her son, have been a, 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 a faithful member, faithful members in our ministry. And she's been here on point to bless us and to minister to all of you here. Minister Tanika Robeson, Minister Jessica Fudd, Colonel Beth, Teacher Grace, I know y'all's name by heart now. Thank you to the team of pastors. Rachel and Rob, the executive team. I know y'all by heart, Minister Jackie. Oh my gosh, who knew that when you open your mouth that we will all fall out? I mean, honestly, under the anointing. But to the staff, uh, Pastor Ray, Ronald and Rachel's staff, I know them by name because I have interacted with them. They've been so kind, even under pressure. They've been so professional. They've all been just, you know, like a breath of fresh air. And that's hard to come by. It's hard to come by, so I openly say that. Minister Jackie, thank you. Thank you those who assisted their pastors, their apostles, and their leaders. I thank God for you all. I just wanted to say that. I'm a sticker of professionalism, and that comes to a long way for me. Thank you. I am. It's crazy. I'm like, sticker. But I thank God for that. Amen. Yes. Well, you know, one last uh, group of people I do want to thank is we were in the process of planning for this powerful time in the Lord, and we needed many individuals to come and, and to participate and to join us. We needed some human resource. <laughs> we needed financial resource, but we needed some human resource. And having a conversation with my son, Joseph, he spoke up and he said, hey, I, I I have a connection with his fraternity. There were a number of individuals who, who he went to school with, who are a part of his, his organization that said, we are willing to volunteer. And they volunteered, so our staff, if you would just raise your hand, if you would stand. These awesome young men, young ladies, 
If you see them, they have black on At the time, here's my son. He's a graduate now. I have my young friend on the side, Joshua. And so I'm so glad we proud of these young men who have come along their side, their, 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 their father and their, their mother, their, their bonus mom, and have um, lifted our arms up. And we needed our arms to be lifted up in ministry. So I just thank God and I give praise and, and glory to God for all of those who have come out, all of those who have sacrificed for this time of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, we're going to have a time when we're about to be released <laughs> from this place. And we'd like to end in just a, a beautiful time of prayer and benediction. And so if you would all just stand with us. We never want to take for granted those who come out with various needs. Many of you may be in this place and we don't want to assume that you have an intimate relationship with the Lord. We never want to have a time like this and you walk away having seen the move of God, having witnessed it. Maybe you've received a touch, but you haven't given your life to Christ. Maybe some of you are in this place and you feel like, yes, I, I, I received a touch and maybe I've seen what was going on, but I've drifted from the Lord and I need to rededicate my life back to him. If anyone in this room fits that description, if you would just raise your hand. We want to pray with you. If you just raise your hand. We'll take a moment. Amen. It looks like we're all saved and walking with the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. And we're so glad about that. Amen. Amen. Well, let us prepare for the benediction. So if everyone would stand with us. Close the kid. Yes. If you would lift up your hands. Hallelujah. May the Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and your family. May the Lord lift you up with his approving countenance and turn his face toward you. And may the Lord fill you with his joy, with his peace, and with his great release. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And let all God's people say, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah.